Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. This is the uh, 17th uh, Sunday after Pentecost. It's always a joy uh, to gather together in the house of the Lord and receive his good gifts to us as he uh, serves us with uh, Holy Communion today as well as his uh, word of forgiveness. Just a few announcements as we begin uh, worship uh, this morning. Uh, we will be having a, uh, this is a correction to our bulletin, but we will have it, be having a uh, free will uh, offering next uh, Sunday after worship uh, with those proceeds to go towards uh, hurricane relief. Uh, we will, the bulletin says on the 23rd, it's actually going to be next uh, Sunday, this, the 16th. Uh, so after our service, we'll have uh, offering plates in the back. We'll collect money for that. Uh, the money will go to LCMS uh, Disaster Relief, and they will use the money specifically uh, for hurricane relief efforts. Uh, and so if you'd like to give uh, cash donations, that's fine. If you'd like to write a check, uh, write those checks to uh, St. Paul's Lutheran Church and put hurricane relief in the memo. Once we've collected uh, those donations, we'll send one large uh, sum uh, to LCMS Disaster Relief. So once again, next week after worship, we'll have a free will offering uh, for hurricane relief. In a few weeks, uh, we will uh, celebrate our fifth uh, Sunday here, our fifth Sunday celebrations uh, continue this year, and we'll have our fifth Sunday on October 30th. So we'll have Bible study and Sunday school at 8.30 in the morning, followed by one worship service uh, at 9.30. Uh, that service will have Holy Communion. So once again, on October 30th, one worship service, 9.30 with Holy Communion. It's Reformation uh, Celebration Sunday. Uh, so all of our service will focus on that. It'll be great to be gathered together as one congregation uh, celebrating our Reformation uh, faith. After, uh, later that afternoon on the 30th, uh, there'll be a, a community-wide uh, Reformation service at 3 o'clock at Trinity Lutheran Church in Darmstadt. So we have opportunities, multiple opportunities on Sunday the 30th uh, to celebrate Reformation. And uh, one uh, word for our prayers, uh, just a, a word announcement. Uh, Pastor Lou earlier in the week uh, fell and hurt his back uh, pretty bad uh, and is in, uh, in a lot of discomfort, but he's getting treatment for that. Uh, but we want to keep Pastor Lou on our prayers. Uh, they are looking at uh, different procedures and possible surgery down the road, and he'll keep us posted on that. But please keep uh, Pastor uh, Lou in, in your prayers, your personal prayers. We'll keep him in our church prayers after he had... Uh, fallen and hurt his back. And then our final announcement, I invite forward uh, Lee, uh, Lee Turpin, who's the uh, chairperson of our SPEAR team, uh, St. Paul's Emergency Action Response Team. He will come forward and, and uh, help us with our emergency preparedness uh, for the month of October. morning. Uh, as we continue our series related to emergency preparedness, we'd like to take a moment today to educate the congregation on our procedures should we be faced with a weather-related emergency. Should inclement or threatening weather occur during a service, the head deacon and other deacons should constantly monitor the situation using information from the National Weather Service radar updates and visible clues such as strong winds, hail, tornado sightings, etc. In the event that a tornado warning siren is sounded by the city, the head deacon will make the decision to evacuate the sanctuary and immediately notify one of the pastors who will in turn notify the congregation from the front of the sanctuary. Spear team members will then move into position to assist members of the congregation in moving to the lower grade school hallway on the east side of the school in a calm and orderly fashion. The SPEAR team members will specifically move to assist the elderly and mobility impaired, those located in the nursery, and also place assistance to usher from the aisles in the sanctuary and at the defined exits. Deacons will extinguish any lit candles. The SPEAR team will direct the congregation through certain doors designated by Pew Row to the designated hallway for better storm protection. If a weather event occurs during Bible study or other church events, the deacons will again be responsible for monitoring the weather conditions. A deacon or spear team member will direct those present to one of the three designated locations on the first floor. 
the lower grade hallway, the hallway outside of the meeting rooms, or the restrooms off the meeting room hallway. Should inclement weather requiring shelter occur during times when there is no Bible study or service, self-protection may be required. Once alerted of the need to take shelter, please move to the lower grade hallway, the hallway outside the meeting rooms, or the restrooms off the meeting room hallway. In all cases, once the hazard is passed, the deacons or spear team will advise when the event has ended and it is safe to move from sheltering areas. In the event of any injury, please alert a deacon for the need for first aid or further care. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. As uh, he mentioned, we have uh, the uh, Board of Deacons as well as the SPEAR team active in these different situations. I did this last week, but I'm looking around. Uh, do we have any deacons with us? We should have some deacons, but uh, I see Terry's in the back. Do we have any other? Lee is a deacon. Terry's a deacon. Jim Lind is somewhere. Is he upstairs? Hi, Jim. Uh, just wanted to kind of point out our deacons so those are familiar faces. If you're interested in being part of the SPEAR team, which will handle some of these emergency situations, please uh, see uh, Lee Turpin for that. But we're very thankful for them uh, as they have a, a visible presence. Hopefully we'll never have emergencies, especially any kind of weather emergencies. But if we do, we're thankful for uh, their foresight in this. Those are the only announcements I have uh, this morning. So we begin our service uh, with the ringing of the bells.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. And delivered me from all my fears. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. And delivers them out of all their troubles. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God. be to God on high.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show mercy to your people in all their troubles. Grant us always to recognize your goodness, give thanks for your compassion, and praise your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Ruth chapter 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. They lived there about ten years. And both Malon and Kilion died. So the, wo the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord has visited his people and given them food. So she set out from that place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband." Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say that I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter for me, for, to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not urge me to leave you or to return from following, following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 2 Timothy chapter 2. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust of faithful men who will be able to teach others also, sharing suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled with civilian pursuits, since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal." But the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation as in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy. For if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being a one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated.
Please bow your heads in prayer with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father above, who gives us every good and perfect gift. Amen. I want to ask you a question. Uh, you need to be honest. How many of you have ever gone through a drive through restaurant at some point in your life? Raise your hand. Yeah, most of us have. If you haven't raised your hand, you're probably lying to yourself. It's okay. But, uh, now, have you ever had that experience that when you go through the drive through restaurant, you pull up to that little speaker thing, and then they say, you know, Walk with the right over here. Can I take your order over here? You're like, what? And then after you get your order done, you do everything, they say, okay, that's going to be a little, would you like fries with that? Like, could you repeat that again? I didn't catch anything you said. Most of us might have had experience like that where you need to hear again what was spoken in the drive through Or maybe you've been listening to the radio, a sports game, especially on the radio in your car, right as a big play is happening and you go under an overpass and for that second or two all you hear is just that static noise you know like Manning under center fourth and three Manning hikes the ball with five seconds left he pulls back he steps back he looks to throw it the throw is <laughs> like no quickly go faster under the overpass get there to see what happened so you want to just know what just happened what just took place is this exactly uh, could you repeat that? What happened? Those are thoughts that are going through our mind as we hear our Old Testament reading for today. They could have a saying, those very same things. Could you repeat what we just heard and what in the world just happened in that reading? See, there is a great amount of going on in our Old Testament reading for Ruth. And there is a great amount that was going on in Naomi's life. The reading actually starts out mainly to be about Naomi. Ruth's mother-in-law. Naomi, she moved with her husband from her homeland to now a foreign place in Moab. Uh, her husband dies. Her sons marry foreign Moabite women. Her sons then both die. And now she's left with nothing except her two daughter-in-laws from a foreign land in a foreign land with nothing to her name. Naomi was in a place of despair. And she looked at the only family that she had left, her two daughters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth. And she looks at them and says, it's time for you to leave. I'm going to return back to my home. I heard in the fields that there is now food in my homeland. I'm going to return back to there. And now you return to your previous families. Go back to your lives. Go back. There's nothing here that I can offer. and There's nothing there that I can guarantee the only thing that they could provide and she could provide and they provided for one another were their tears of weeping. So Naomi tells Orpah and Ruth for again, for a second time, did you not hear what I had to say to you? She has no support. She's not even sure what's going to happen to her when she gets home because leaving her homeland and going to a foreign place, that basically says you're kind of starting off new. You're not guaranteed of how you're going to be treated or what's going to happen when you go back home. Did Orpah and Ruth, though, miss that message? There was nothing for them if they stayed with Naomi. Now, I'm sure we felt like that at times, is how Naomi felt in her life. Just when it seems like nothing could get worse, it does. It just snowballs from there. We're at the end of our rope at times in our lives, not thinking that we could bear any more grief. And all we are left to do is cry. The very interesting thing that takes place is that second time, Naomi tells Orpah and Ruth to leave, to go back to their families again. Orpah, she takes up Naomi's advice and she returns back to her family and back to her gods. But now the story changes because the focus becomes on Ruth. What does Ruth do? When, when demanded and commanded by Naomi, Ruth stays. Stays by her mother-in-law's side. Stays there clinging to Naomi, as we hear in our Old Testament reading for today. It reminds us that when we are at our wit's end, and there seems to be no way out on where we can go and nothing left for us to do, 
What do we do? Do we act like Orpah or Ruth? Do we end up running away and doing whatever pleases us? Do we not face the matters at hand? What are we clinging to in life? Are we clinging on to the things of this world, the material possessions, or even our past? Those past ways of living, the people from our past, they may come and go. But there's only one thing that remains constant in an ever-changing world. Orpah left Naomi because she thought there was nothing else for her if she stayed with Naomi and went back to Judah, back to Naomi's homeland. Ruth, though, stayed because she saw that Naomi had everything that she needed. She just didn't know it. Ruth said to Naomi these words, Do not urge me to leave you or return from following you. For where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Ruth stayed clinging to Naomi because she remembered who was still with Naomi and her. The Lord God was with them. No matter what was to happen to them, no matter what they were to go through, the Lord God would remain with them. And this God was different than the God of the Moabites. This God was different from all people and everything else going on in the world. This God was different. This God, Ruth knew, was the Lord Almighty. For even there, at the lowest of their low, there was no question who remained with Naomi and Ruth as they traveled back to her homeland of Judah and traveled back to a little old town called Bethlehem. The Lord God would still be with Naomi and Ruth throughout their hardships, throughout their travels. The Lord God was there. We continue to read the book of Ruth and see that the Lord God had a plan. And Ruth was there to remind Naomi of this fact. The Lord God, the God of all gods, he would be there for them. Even though Naomi continued to remain discouraged, even though when she was returning home and her friends and family got to see her, and they welcomed her back, Naomi said, no, my name is no longer Naomi, just call me Merah. For she thought the Lord had dealt bitterly with her. But Ruth knew the truth, and she continued to remind Naomi of this truth, how the Lord God would see them both throughout that life and even unto death. The Lord God would be with them, and the Lord God will be with us. See, we give thanks for Ruth's faithfulness, not to Naomi, but unto the Lord. She continued to put her trust in him even when she had lost her husband, even when she had lost and left her homeland, even though she moved on with her mother-in-law to a place of uncertainty. The Lord was with her. Because the truth was that Ruth was not clinging unto the Lord. No, instead the Lord clung to Naomi and Ruth just as he continues to cling on to us this very day. Have you ever taken an article right out of the dryer, right after that buzz sounds or that little beep goes off, and you take it out and you're trying to get your laundry full and stuff, and all of a sudden you take out a shirt and there's like a sock or two and you're trying to shake it off, but it just won't come off. That static cling has it there, and there you can try as hard as you can, and then as you start to remove it, you see that little static electricity just kind of leeches back on. Have you ever seen that? You've done laundry, right? Yeah, yeah, you've seen that. You've had it happen. We've all had. Well, the Lord God, the Lord God clings to us. The Lord God clings to us more than just some static sock to a shirt or vice versa. The Lord God holds on to us so dearly. And it's not static cling. It's his word that clings to us. Even though we do not hold on to him, he continues to hold on to us. He continues to lift us up. And Ruth got it. Even when her own mother-in-law, who was familiar with this God, who was part of God's chosen people, Naomi didn't, Ruth got it. 
For what made Naomi different was her God, and Ruth saw this. God provided for Naomi, and God would provide for Ruth, and God continues to provide for us. He was with them through all their pain and sorrow. He is with us through all our pain and sorrow. For the Lord God would see them through it as he would see us through it, even unto death. For the Lord God will also see us throughout this life and to that one that is to come. And how do I know this? He hasn't left us yet. The word of the Lord is not bound, but the word of the Lord, it clings. Think about it. Everything that's bad in this world, the Lord has not left it. All the disease, all the destruction, all the disaster, and yet the Lord God remains in our presence. The Lord God remains active in our lives and in our world. The Lord God is not just a God that passes by like as we do through a drive through restaurant or like that who loses direction over us at certain times in life as he fades in and out our ears like a radio station playing in the background. No, the Lord God is in all places and at all times he is present in our lives, seeing us through the hardships of this life, seeing us through even the point of our death where he will take us from this valley of tears and suffering to be with him forever. The prophet Isaiah says it like this, You, Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom I took from the ends of the earth, who I called from its farthest corner, saying to you, You are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The Lord God continues to hold us up. The Lord God continues to cling to us, reminding us that we are not holding ourselves up, but that he holds us up. For the Lord God was with Ruth for plans that he had for her that she could never even imagine. Think about it. What's so special about Ruth? This Moabite would later be referenced in the Matthew's Gospel account. There at the beginning of Matthew chapter 1, she is listed as part of the lineage of Jesus. That's right. Jesus comes from the lineage of Ruth from our Old Testament reading. There in that same place Ruth would move to, that little town of Bethlehem would be born for her, her Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. See, God had a plan for Ruth. He would provide for Ruth throughout her life, and God also has a plan for us. His plan is simple, and it is true. God will always be with you. He will never leave or forsake you. He is the faithful one who is with us always and to the very end of the age. Just as Jesus Christ said as he ascended back to his heavenly throne, Lo, I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the God that we have. We have the God who is with us. We have the God who comforts us. We have the God who cares for us. We have this God who is faithful even when we are not. For God did what he did for that once foreigner Ruth by leading her back to a new home. For calling forth his son to be born in the flesh there in that little village and town of Bethlehem. He did that for Ruth. And he also takes care and clings to us, his people, yet today. We hear these words also from Isaiah 43 that remind us that the Lord God continues to be with us. The prophet Isaiah reminds the people, for the word of the Lord is, fear not, I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. 
When you walk through fire, you will not be burned. The flame will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. The Lord is with us. The Lord was with Ruth, and Ruth reminded Naomi of this, and the Lord God is with us yet this very day. He has a plan, and his plan is to be with his people throughout this life of suffering and chaos. And even when death calls, the Lord God will be with us. He will take us from this life to be with him, to be in that place that he has prepared for us. The Lord God continues to be with his people, clinging to them even in death. Even in death. For we know this to be true, for we have baptism, which reminds us that we are his people. This baptism that we are baptized, it's not our own, but it is God's. And Paul reminds us in Romans, if we are baptized into Christ's death, we are also baptized into his resurrection. For God will see us through this life, clinging to us no matter what happens, no matter what we undergo, God will be with us always. Amen. And now the peace that passes our human understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And in that faithfulness of God as he clings to us throughout this life and in the one to come. Amen. We sing the offering hymn as the offerings are brought forward. We stand for prayer. Lord, we give you thanks in the company of the upright. Great are your works, full of splendor and majesty. Your righteousness endures forever. You are gracious and merciful, and we praise your holy name. May your word and sacraments have mighty effect, both here and in those places where your people face physical persecution so that your church may increase and prosper even in the face of resistance. Continue to shower your blessing upon our congregation and all our members. Especially this day, we pray for Starla Murphy and Olivia, Jacob Musgrave and Aaliyah, John Myers Jr. and Devin, Jim, and Jamie Neeson. Lord, in your mercy. Savior of the world, continue to bless those who proclaim your love and lift high your cross for all to see especially all pastors, 
teachers, missionaries, and other church workers. Grant your favor to the faculty and staff of Evansville Lutheran School as they share your love with all their students and families. May your word have free course here and throughout the world to be proclaimed to the building up of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord of creation, grant your peace and comfort to all those affected by Hurricane Ian. Give them patience in their tribulation, hope in their distress, and trust in their time of loss. Protect all volunteers and workers who labor to assist those in need. Keep them safe under your protective care. Allow the message of your love to be proclaimed through your faithful people who provide support and encouragement. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you instituted holy matrimony, blessed and honored it with the presence of your Son at the marriage of Cana and Galilee, and you continue to protect and preserve it. Strengthen all who are married to walk in love and fidelity, holding to each other in sickness and in health, in adversity and prosperity, and grant to them strength, patience, and faithfulness. Be with them to the end of their days, and when their earthly pilgrimage has ended, graciously bring them to the marriage supper of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that they may dwell in your joy forever. Bless all those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries this week, including John and Mary Fuchs. Lord, in your mercy. You strengthen our faith, O God, and promise to wipe away every tear from our eyes. Be with those in our midst who are sick, hospitalized, or recovering, especially Bob Grant, Frank Rankowicz, John Woodson, Carol Stevens, Bob Hartman, Lewis Benton, Joella Sutton, Becca Anderson, Caleb Spicer, Mark Kell, Ruth Bashir, Carolyn Sparks, Ruby Morgan, Bob Hoffman, Jeff Kachanik, Darlene Hatfield, Micah Hoffman, Barbara Miller, Luann Pierce, Judy Fisher, Hilda Timmy, Lauren, Lauren uh, Chambers, Mike Ruber, Pastor Lou, and Vernita Cecil. Give them healing and comfort in, in accordance with your will. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, according to the multitude of your loving kindnesses, hear us as we bring our needs and concerns, our prayers and our thanksgiving before you. All that we have asked, may we receive by your mercy and grace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament on page 8. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to your holy Lord, almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We stand to sing the Nunc Dimittis. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to Almighty God that you have re refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Oh.